up, y'all? Welcome to the Top Flight Podcast. You know what it is. You know what we're here to do. Back in studio today, beautiful Austin, Texas. I'm here with the boys to my left. I got the Instagram Reels goat, Mr. B. What's up, mate? How hey, you doing? What's up, bro? Doing great. It's a midweek episode. We're not used to these. It's a little late one today, uh, but I'm happy to be here either way. It's been a very, very yeah. tough week, bro, but it's in been a good packed. Way. It's in been packed way. with football, man. This weekend, playoffs, it's just a lot. You know it, what I mean? It's also called soccer. But I'm gonna go to to my G Bobby true, over true, here. True. What's up, mate? How you doing, bro? What's up, bro? I'm chilling, man. It's a, it's a cold night in Austin, Texas, bro. Yeah. It's, cold it's chilly. It's a little it's chilly. Cold, bro. It's cold. I'm cold, bro. I'm it's not used to this, bro. Definitely. Um, the game against RSL, it was early. The sun was in. The, the it sun was, was hot. hot. But we got a game coming up on Sunday versus Dallas, and it's gonna be cold. Yeah, it it's is. It's gonna be a cold one. Cold. And on that note, I'm gonna bring in the man with the cool jacket, the Austin FC anthem, Adidas, uh, sweatshirt or jacket, zip up. I don't know what to call it. What's up, Primo? How you doing, mate? What's up, bro? Chilling. It's excited to be here. Freshly married, people. Freshly married. Freshly married. <laughs> hey. Forgot about yeah. that, bro. Where's the Freshly ring at, bro? Freshly married, bro. Is, is, is the ring right? Oh, okay, okay. The ring's right there. The ring. Looks like a Super Bowl ring, actually. Yeah. God <laughs> damn. Damn. Oof. Damn. <laughs> Diamonds everywhere, bro. Let's get into the episode, though. We got some stuff to talk about. We're going to talk briefly about RSL. Everybody already talked about that game. We need to talk about the Dallas matchup as well that's coming up. We're going to dibble-dabble a bit in Europe. Also, we're going to talk about Kareem the Dream winning the Ballon de Oro. A little bit of the Clásico. And, of course, we got to touch up on the EPO action that went on this weekend. But I want to start off with my GB. Bro, let's get right into it, bro. Austin FC versus RSL. We beat them. It was two to two. Some fans were saying that we got lucky because we had uh, one man advantage. RSL did go down two ten men, and we had about what thirty minutes to try to get that equalizing goal. We did get it. We uh, went to extra time. Juicy hit the post in extra time. I uh, went just right off the base of the post. Um, then he scored again, called off sides, but because Musa Jite was just a bit off. But in the end, Austin FC manages to get by RSL in penalties against all odds. When all the pundits, all the MLS experts, and a, a lot of fans were saying that this Austin FC side was going to lose against RSL in penalties, much like the, much kind of like much like the fashion that Seattle did last season. Give us your take on this game, B. How did you live it? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it was an ugly win. Um, <clears throat> we went down super early, man. That header, uh, RSL, we were down. And then by the 13th minute, we were down 2-0. Just the worst start that we could ever hope for against RSL. Um, but the, 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 the main, the man of the game, the man of the hour, the man of everything was Juicy. I mean, Juicy could have had four or five goals this game. I mean, yeah. Regoni missed a sitter too. Um, but, um, you know, with... Juicy's first goal, that header to, to level the game. And then, of course, calls went our way. It, it's, it's, we could say that calls it's went soccer. our way. It's soccer. The red card helped us out a lot. Almost, I mean, it helped us out tremendously. The penalty decision calls helped us out a lot. I mean, calls went our way. You know, a lot of calls have gone the opposite way. We talked about the, the, goal, the, the referee for the Colorado game. I mean, yeah. what was that, bro? What was that? So it goes, it goes against and for you. You know, it's just this game. We just got the calls that we needed. Drewsy finished the penalty to tie it in last minute. I mean, I was everywhere at the game, you know, uh, right in the front. I was in the supporters. We were just, I mean, it was just buzzing. The stadium was was amazing. Extra time. We were there a lot later than we wanted to be. And then penalties, the first ever, like, experience in person, such a, like, a, a tremendous amount of, like, just yeah. pressure in the fans and the yeah. penalties. And then RSL just, Stuber coming in with the save. Oh, man, this game... Is for belongs to Stuber and Drusy, man. Drusy should have had like a hat trick, bro. Hundred percent. And B, you touched in on a really good point. We said I said this on the We Austin TV uh, uh, Twitter space. That space was recorded and it's still floating around in the TL. I'll make sure to retweet it so it can resurface so you guys can listen to what the fans had to say right after that match. It was very emotional. Mm -hmm. And for me, where the emotion was, as I bring in Bali on this. I mentioned on the space is the fact that I've never lived a game like this in person. It's always been on screen, always been on TV. Yeah. I've been to, to games in person, but they've only been friendlies. So the fact that I got to live a crucial playoff game like this that went to extra time, that went to PKs in my hometown is something really of dreams. Bali, I want to bring you in on this, mate. What was this RSL match for you? What did this win mean for you? Oh, man, like I said, bro, it was a roller coaster, man. It was a, But it was a great, great game, bro. You know what? I was next to my boy Dan, Dan the man. Yeah, shout know. out to him. Shout out to Dan, bro. That is my G, bro. Yeah. That is my G, man. And uh, we were, I'm telling you, uh, being 2-0 two, two down in 15 minutes, it was a slap in the face, man. Yeah, it was bad. And, uh, man, I was quiet. I was nervous. My stomach was hurting. My head was hurting. I wanted to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> but um, bro. but th then Drusi, Drusi kind of woke us up. Yeah. And, it, and it was 2-1. 
I'm like, okay, well, we're gonna, we have second half. And then Joshua made key subs. Yeah. He did not wait. He said, halftime, just bring him in. We need, we need a goal. We need to come back. And it took us a while, bro. RSL were defending with their lives, bro. Yeah. yeah. They wanted to go to penalties because they knew that that was the only way that they could beat us, mm-hmm. to be honest. There was there was a moment where RSL was holding a back line of five. Wow. And it was yeah. very difficult to get through that. And like you said, Josh Wolf made some some, some, some key subs. He brought in Zan Kolmanik, who has gotten a lot of criticism mm-hmm. from this podcast. But one thing that Zan Kolmanik can do is put in crosses. And at one point, the last 20 minutes of the regular 90, we were putting in crosses like it was – Nobody's business. Yeah. And Zan, Zan Komunik put in the cross that won us the penalty by Rigoni that got us that 2-2. So it was a Zan Komunik cross at the end of the day that Very I true. guess you could say won us that penalty. I want to bring in Primo on this. Primo got the uh, lineup on screen for us. Shout out Primo bringing up that in the uh, background. Primo, let's talk about the lineup real quick. The main thing, the main topic of conversation was the fact that Valencia got the start over Dani Pereira. What was going through your mind, Primo, when that happened, when you saw that Valencia was on that starting 11 except um, over Dani Pereira? Um, I mean, I wasn't too upset about it just because, you know, Valencia had already started the last game and it looks like Joshua was going with that option again. Um, And another thing, Dani Pereira offers a lot, so him coming off the bench was going to be crucial. Um, I think Josh just switched it up. Maybe he thought Mm -hmm. it was going to be more of a – of an attacking game by RSL um, because, you know, Johan's there to defend and that's, you know, he had that mistake. He was in the box. He was, you know, really far back. And at that point, we're losing 2-0. We didn't need to defend anymore, bro. So I think the halftime subs were perfect. I think Josh Wolf did a really good job there. Um, And like I said, once Danny Pereira came back on, um, it was a whole different game. Um, So I think we're just going to play it game by game, you know, whether Pereira or, or Valencia starts. But... I was a bit surprised that that he was on the starting lineup. 100%. I think he got it wrong, bro. Yeah, I think, yeah. He, did I think he got it wrong. I think he uh, he anticipated RSL playing a certain way, and it didn't turn out the way that he, I guess, envisioned in his head. Uh, and I think he got it wrong. Now, yeah. I mean, but I mean, the changes that he made, he was forced to make yeah. because of the situation that we were in. So it wasn't like he changed the game. No, he had to. Yeah, he had to. He had to change the game, and we had to go forward. It was like automatic. I mean, we had 38 shots, bro, compared yeah. to RSL's 11. I yes. mean, we had no choice but yeah. to go forward. 38 shots, 11 on target, 69% possession, something that Austin FC loves to have possession. Six offsides, which were at least two goals, man, maybe. And yeah. 14 corner kicks. Yes. 14 corner kicks. Man, the stadium goes wild when we get a corner kick, bro. I love it. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to talk about this RSL game real quick, real brief, is our PK takers. That penalty sequence, it's no secret, Brad Stuver beast at penalties we saw it against uh chicharito last season we saw it this season also as well um he's incredible when it comes to pk shout out to brad stuver but i want to talk about our pk takers b did you have any any um were you scared when you saw our pk takers come up because it was drusi number one yeah we had fagu number two and then rigoni was our third pk taker now for me i have the utmost trust in drusi yes i will follow fagundes to the death (laughs) <laughs> but Rigoni stepped up, and I was a bit yeah. concerned. It, Go ahead, B. Uh, I wasn't concerned. I think Rigoni is quality. I think he will bury penalties. Um, I was more in question to see, like, Drew C. Fago, Rigoni to me, perfect for me. Mm-hmm. Perfect, perfect. Um, um, who would come off after Rigoni? And that who, was would, a good who would take the fifth is the, the, the questions for me because I'd figured Drew C. was going to stay and make the decisive one and Fago and Rigoni stepping in to, to, to uh, score the first ones. But... I mean, RSL just did it for themselves, and, and Stuber were making the great saves. I mean, the the the, the game clinching miss was horrendous, yeah. horrendous yeah, miss. It, was, it hit someone like uh, right in front of me. I we got it on the yeah. on, on on Instagram. Poor it, guy got it in the bro, face, bro. It hit him, and I was like, bro, that was a horrendous. That, you know that was like me in high of? school, bro. You know what it made me think of? What? Primo might know this. When Sergio Ramos skied the PK oh against oh, Bayern yeah, Munich, yeah. when they had the beautiful yeah, kids, yeah. oh, that hurt me. Bro. That was a horrible taking penalty. Horrible. Didn't Terry yeah. slip up once and it hit the post? Yes, final Champions League final. It didn't even hit the post. Oh, yeah. Geez. It cost Unlucky. us the, the, the Champions League. Yeah. Unlucky. But, yeah. I mean, some fans were saying that RSL was the underdog, so them being sent home really is not going to hurt anybody. Austin FC... This game was for them to win. Yeah. We go down 2-0, like Bali said, and my stomach hurt. My emotions were high. I was nervous. But at the end of the day, Austin FC came through. Do yeah. you have anything you want to add on this RSL game, Bali? I think this RSL game was a was a, a great game. But I also think that next round, 
we have to wake up, bro. You yeah. know, we can't go down 2-0 in 15 minutes, bro. That's not acceptable. But to that, bro, to the, the, the RSL game, I think, was tricky, bro. I it think was. it was tricky for Wolf to make a decision. It was tricky by the way he plays. And, like... I don't know. Like I feel like the game against Dallas, which we'll we'll get to the uh, we'll we'll get to the uh, we'll get to the um, to the to the Dallas preview. But the RSL game was tricky, and I think Wolf kind of overthought it and kind of tried to be slick with it. But I think uh, with our Dallas game, it's just gonna be more like straightforward. I think Danny starts. I think we just go the way that we've been playing. Hundred yeah, percent, Bobby. I agree. Yeah. I agree, man. I'm 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 I'm, I'm excited, and I'm, I can't wait for for Sunday. Bro, to be honest, man. And let's roll into that. Primo, who do we play on Sunday at 7 p.m.? <laughs> we got Frisco. Frisco. <laughs> FC, bro. Man. That's honest, a big game. Primo, honestly, bro, I don't think anybody could have written a better Western Conference semifinal. Yeah. I think this is probably one of the biggest semifinals in a while, bro. Yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. In a while. Yeah. 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 I mean, we got our L.A. Derby, Texas Derby. Yeah. I mean, the class, yeah. El Trafico. And then the two, I mean, Dallas, Austin, I mean, God, man, this is beautiful on the website. And side. also, as we move into this preview for the uh, uh, Dallas game, if you want to hear a conversation more in depth on that RSL game, make sure to follow us on Twitter and look for our uh, Twitter spaces. You can find it there. The fans went in RSL. We had uh, MLS pundits come in. It was a great conversation. We had a ring debate on there that got heated. Yeah. It got super <laughs> heated between yeah, Alex Ring. But if you want to uh, hear that RSL conversation more in depth as we roll into this Dallas, make sure to uh, check us out on Twitter. B uh, Bali, I want to get you in on, on this, mate. We've never beaten FC Dallas, bro. Can we do it on Sunday? We can, bro, but it's, it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. They're, they're going to come here. They want to upset us, bro. You know, uh, Velasco's going to be a problem. Ferreira's oh, going to be a panenka. problem. Velasco's a very good player, bro, and he's going to be on, on Nick Lima's side. So I need Nick Lima focus. Focus. I need him to, to study him the whole week. And uh, Ferreira's going to be a problem, bro. You know him. He's always around the box, and he, he's cheeky, bro. He can score on us. Fe uh, one thing on uh, Ferreira, two things, actually. Number one, he missed a yeah. game-winning series. Yeah, I did see that. that. Number two, this morning, he was officially awarded the Young Player of the mm -hmm. Year. So that might ignite a fire underneath his, mm -hmm. uh, underneath his butt that could have been put out when that sitter yeah. was, was missed. And fans on Twitter were saying, imagine if this happens in a World Cup. Because Ferreira is like kind of like he's the trying to solidify. Runner. He's yeah, trying to he solidify is. that number nine. It's yeah. him, Pepe, um, the kid from Norwich, Josh Sargent. I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really between those guys. I mean, you have Jordan Pifok, but they're not really Greg. Greg Berhalter is not really favoring him as much. I mean, there's more Twitter accounts yeah. out there. And that I mean, these teams U.S. Better. men's football, it's crazy. I mean, people are. I mean, you know, Ferreira is he a number nine? Is he not? Like, it's just, is. it's just crazy. But the point is, he comes he, my homie Lalo. <laughs> the point is that he is trying to show out. And show Burhalter like nah like you can you can you can depend on me so hundred percent got a lot to prove. Um, on this Dallas game, this matchup that is coming up, B, uh, Bali had mentioned that Nick Lima is gonna have to be guarding some important yeah. players on his side. Do you trust Nick Lima? Yeah, I do. I trust Nick Lima, bro. I trust him in, in big games. You know, when we played against LAFC, he had a, a a wonderful game, had a great game. But I mean, looking back now, I mean, we were like, oh, who's gonna guard Gareth Bale? And, and now it doesn't seem like. I mean, it seems like anybody can probably do a job against Gareth Bale. But Gareth Bale's out there. <laughs> he's out there. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I trust Lima, man. I trust Lima. I think he's he's a type of he's he's a, a fullback that's gonna get down and, and get someone's face and you know be be rugged and and and, and defend. So I trust Lima to to do a job. Bali um, versus the R versus RSL, we went down to zero, like you had mentioned. The first goal was poor defending we were very soft we didn't really contest the cross coming in Ruben Gaberson got beat what does the defense need to do against Dallas to solidify themselves on the pitch and make it to that uh, Western Conference Finals I think they just need to be more focused bro and even Josh Wolf said in the press conference that uh, it was a mistake on Ruben no he should have been more focused he should have looked behind him and saw that the, the attacker was right behind him yeah. but um we just need to be focused bro you know and it's a derby bro it's a big game and I yeah. feel like the guys know okay, it's a derby the fans are going to be in it it's a, it's a playoff game, and we need to we need to bounce back. Yeah, and I think on the the RSL game, it's like I mean, first ever playoff game for Austin. A lot of these players, you know, they're not they're in a new club, and and this position is just new. It's just new vibe all around, new squad, and like you get those those jitters off, that 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 nervousness off. You shake it off with a with a penalty win dub, and come in this Dallas game a little bit more confident, and get that first ever game out of your mind, and now we can just focus on, on Dallas game and. And I, like I said, I think that the RSL game was more tricky, but I think this Dallas game is more straightforward on what we need to do. I think we go back to our roots on how to how to attack and defend. Primo, did you watch the uh, Dallas game, Minnesota? I did. Yeah, did I was you watching. Watch it? Yeah, I, I, heard, I, I wasn't able to watch it. I was at work, um, but I heard that 
some key players got injured for Dallas. Was there any uh, uh, injuries? I heard Paul Arriola. Yeah, I, I, yes. did see, I, I did see that he went out. But he, I think in the might. celebrations he looked okay though. Yeah, he looked okay. He looked I, okay. I, I think he. I think he'll be ready, bro. Okay. I think he'll be there. Yeah. Assuming they come at us with the with the super strong squad with their best squad, yeah, we have to go at them with our yeah. best squad. Plus, is Danny Pereira in that best squad, bro? Or is Danny Valencia? Pereira, but Danny Pereira starts this game. I mean, da- Danny Pereira starts against Dallas. I, the only reason why I, I see Wolf starting Valencia in the RSO game is because, like Primo said, maybe he was assuming RSO was going to uh, play a certain way, and it just didn't turn out that way. Maybe he thought that RSO was going to be more conservative. Maybe they're all. Maybe they're not gonna press forward. But it turns out it didn't work out. I think he got it wrong, and I think it's just straightforward for Dallas. I think Danny Pereira starts this game, and if he if that wasn't enough to tell him that, I mean, we when he came on, it changed it changed the game. I know we went we went up a man. They went down a man. But I mean, come on, bro. Danny Pereira has to start against Dallas, hundred percent. Hundred percent. We're gonna get a great game on Sunday, seven p.m. If you haven't got tickets yet, I've been saying this all week. Keep an eye on SeatGeek. The prices fluctuate. They go up and down. Some You might get lucky. Some people listen their tickets for a steal. Uh, other people are listening them for an absolute $300. absurd amount of money. Bro, they were like $250, 300 <laughs> yeah, bucks, $300. And some people bought them. And then right before the game started, they were like $60, 70 bucks. They dropped. Really? They yeah, dropped, bro. bro. So if you're one of those fans that hasn't got their tickets yet, just... Instead of making a rash decision and paying five hundred dollars for a supporter section ticket, just wait a bit. Just wait a bit. <laughs> and if you are, I mean, oh people God. that listen to this, I think they 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 know. I think they know what's up. They've been buying tickets all season long. It's for the newbies that I don't know. Because yes, yes. I mean, bro, you know. I, I had uh, one of my cousins hit me up today. He was like, "Hey, how can I buy a season ticket next year?" I was like, "Bro, where have you been? Yeah, have you been under <laughs> yeah. a rock? Like, there's yeah. twenty thousand people waiting for a season ticket. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It's there's gonna be no a slow way you're process. Gonna get it. It's gonna be a and, slow process. And also, Austin MC season ticket holders." 97 percent of them renewed renewed for yeah. the season so three percent yeah. are out there i don't think it's going to be easy for yeah, anybody for this season yeah. ticket. especially yeah. after the incredible season we had this year yeah yeah, yeah. right uh anything you guys want to add on the dallas preview primo maybe you uh no man i think i just i'm just really excited about another home game another playoff game uh these guys get they need to get focused um but who knows maybe we go out through this whole playoff you know barely winning i think that's what matters at the end of the day as long as we get the dub um, it's again Dallas that you know someone we've never beaten before. So score prediction. Oh, that's tough. Dang. That's tough, bro. I'm gonna say maybe like a two one. We win. <laughs> the Ooh, most the, the safest, the safest, the safest, the safest one. Safest <laughs> one. Yeah, there's gonna be goals. I know yeah, that both yeah, teams yeah, are gonna yeah, score. Yeah, yeah. Score prediction B. I was almost about to say two one, bro. Two I mean, one, it's bro. just I can't. Yeah, it's two one, bro. I say two regular one. Regular time win. Yeah, yeah regular I think so, win? bro. I mean, uh, on a, on a note on Dallas's game against Minnesota, two Panenkas in the in the in the two shootout, and the last one to win the game. I mean, filthy. Disrespect. Yeah, filthy. Don't don't try that with Stuber. Yeah, don't, don't try, try that, that, bro. I mean, filthy, bro. I mean, the keeper fell down and almost got up and yeah. blocked it, bro. I mean, that's I mean, filthy. I thought he was gonna swing his foot, but he did. You know, he, he on, like the first one he did. Yeah, on the he first one he did. On the first one he did. On the first one he he swing his foot at it, and then it kind of tipped it, and it still went in. And then the the game winning one, he got up and almost tipped it with his hand. I mean, he got close, but yeah. Cheeky, cheeky. I got 2 1 ATX, players. bro. I, I think I got an ATX dub. Um, we've never beaten Dallas. And what a, what a time to beat them for the first time, if not in the playoffs. Um, I think the atmosphere is going to be even more than the RSL game. I think the RSL game was was a big moment for us historically and it's like the first time but i mean this derby in the one of the, in the now the official the most important game in our in our history i mean it's gonna be crazy lit on sunday bro crazy lit 100%. and a quick note on the rso uh uh march the march was amazing bro the, yes. the la murga yes. los verdes i mean bro you could check out our instagram our reels i mean dude it, it when I was deep in that march, and it it gave me like European vibes. Everything like went some, green for a everything moment. was green, bro. It it was just amazing, bro. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So amazing. The I only expect thing that, that sucks shit. about those is the way that those those smoke smell. Bro. I was in there, body. The I, I was in there, bro. I was in there, man. It was exciting, but yeah. Bali, we got to get your score prediction, mate. Uh, I'm gonna switch it up, man. I think it, I think it'll be a three one. Three one for it, for us come on, bro, for the verde. Bro, okay, on, I, mean, I, I gotta I think, ask. I think it it'll be it'll be a tough first half. I yeah. think it'll be one one, but I think second half we take over and uh, we score two and it'll be three one. Okay, Drewsy okay. Brace, Drewsy Brace, Drusy the Brace. MVP, the real MVP, the real MVP, the, the real, real MVP. MVP. Bro, oh, check this out. Check this MVP, out. I'm gonna bro. give y'all. I'm gonna give y'all my take real quick. Everybody's talking about Drusy Dior, rightfully so. This guy is our guy. Yes, man. But I'm gonna give the flowers to Diego Fagundes mm-hmm. because Drusy Dior is Drusy Dior. But where would he be without Diego Fagundes' career high 16 or 17 assists, bro? Yeah, Drusy has his goals. But look at Fagu's assists, bro. The goals have to come from somewhere. And Fagundes has been incredible for us this season. If he can turn it up in Dallas, easily we win that game. 
Yeah. And he did last time. Copa Tejas, he scored the goal that made it 1-1. Austin FC just needed a win or a tie. We tied them 1-1. Fagundes' goal, and we took home the cup. Yeah, yeah 100%. Fag was an amazing player for us. I mean, last year he was the player for us, the player of this. I mean, we had a horrible season last season, but out of all the players, he was the best one for us. And then this season, he seems to be the second best. And just happy for him, bro. I just got one more question. Yeah, go One ahead, more go question ahead, go before ahead. we skip. Before nah, we hit stop us with it. Hit us with Dallas it. preview. Yep. And this is an important one. Rigoni or Finley versus Dallas? Oh, Finley, bro. Finley. I mean, keep Finley. I think you keep Finley. Uh, Rigoni came in on the uh, RSL and missed a couple of sitters, but I think you still keep Finley, bro. I think I think you start Finley. I think Rigoni is a good option off the bench. Yeah. Bali, say Finley. Same question to you. I, th- I think that we, sh- we should start with Finley, but Rigoni wasn't bad, bro. Rigoni yeah. wasn't bad. He and wasn't I think bad. that if he wants to bring him back on in uh, halftime again, yeah. then he should do it, bro. He was trying, bro, and that, that's what matters. That Rigoni was trying. He yeah. also he also took his penalty with his right foot, yeah. but he takes his corners with his left. But you know, we already knew this. Um, he, it was known that he's the word is ambidextrous. I ambidextrous, think? yeah, both, yeah. Both feet. And his run up was long. Cheeky run up. Cheeky was run up. Che- uh, I was Ar- nervous. Argentine vibes. I was nervous too, he bro. was swaggy with it, bro. It was. You live. remember Guau's run up? <laughs> <laughs> Guau's run up was like half field, bro. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, and yeah. He just run straight. Straight run and straight. bury it, bro. Yeah. Uh, Rigoni's PK stance made me think of like a kicker in like the NCAA. You yeah, know how yeah, they take like, back and then they step two sides? He like, bro, it was, bro, it was like, yeah, he, he was Superb. like, I'm live. He's Superb. like, watch this, I'm live. Yeah. He like backed up, went to the side, kind of cut back in and, you know what I mean, yeah. just swaggy with really, it. You know also, I, mean? I hope that the fact that he got the ball to hit the back of the net and then pointed to the fans, yeah. I really hope that ignite something in his heart. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't be upset if he starts, though, but I would rather have Finley. I wouldn't be upset if he starts. Primo, I also want to ask you the same question. Rigoni or Finley, mate? Dang. I'm going to say Rigoni, bro. Fuck Ooh. you. Mm. Rigoni. 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 I mean, I think both options are yeah. probably good off the bench. I think I, so, But, too. I mean, th- this last game, I think, was probably Rigoni's best game so far. Yeah. I, I think, think he, yeah. he was really out there, he you know, trying dangerous. to prove himself or trying to give something to the team. He won us the it's PK. Pl- it's playoffs, so, I mean... I mean, just and then it's you know we don't beat FC Dallas. We haven't beaten FC Dallas, Ever. so maybe something different would help out. So I say we started going, and then you know we need Finley. He's there. Last oh, thing on the uh, FC Dallas Austin FC matchup coming up this Sunday. FC Dallas fans big mad because Austin <laughs> FC only allocated them like a hundred <laughs> tickets, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, hey. You want to play? You want more fans at the game? Win second seed. Win second first seed. seed. Exactly yeah. what I was yeah. thinking. Then what do you think? The, the whole point of the seeds is the higher you fall in the, in the table, that's where home and field advantage. These, these guys think we're going to give them 300 oh, tickets. Yeah. Well, then why did we finish why? second for exactly, them, bro? bro? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, my nah, God. Nah, bro. bro. Finish higher exactly, on the table. Exactly. Then then we'll see, bro. Yeah. All right. Anything you want to add true. on the uh, <laughs> Good Dallas point, B. Good point, B. Good point, B. <laughs> you want to add anything on that, Bobby? No, nah, man. I think I, I, all, all I've been seeing today is just Dallas fans crying, crying, yeah. crying. Like, yes. oh, not enough tickets. You're not even going to come, bro. Exactly. So, why are you, <laughs> so why are you complaining, bro? Like, you're not even yeah. going to come. So just stay yeah. in Dallas. Dallas fans yeah. just love to contradict themselves. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing a tweet today that said that why, Austin FC, why does Austin FC have a chant that's named El Matador. Me dicen El Matador. Yeah. Na, 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 na. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. But then somebody clapped back and they said, why is FC Dallas supporters group named Matador when a matador kills bulls? FC Dallas's main mascot is a freaking bull. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what, they, what the it fuck? It doesn't yeah. make Are sense. Are you serious, bro? Matador, oh they're, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, the ones yeah, in Spain. Yeah, I didn't Spain even think about it. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with the red cape. Yes, the and one then, they, they exactly. like stab him in the back till they bleed out. Man, and that's what is, like, is, like, is FC Dallas' mascot in their crest? A bull. Yeah. The FC that's, Dallas fans, get it together. I think get it think together, out, bro. bro. <laughs> the only thing I'm hoping for Sunday is uh, I hope I see Becky G. Oh. <laughs> she mid, bro. She hey, mid. Hit me is she me gonna, me gonna be there? She gonna be there? She's gonna be there. She gonna dates be there? Uh, Sebastian Legglet, Le- 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 oh, whatever. Okay. They really date for real? They date. Yeah. I believe so. Yes. And if she, real. they've she, been dating I think for a minute. Friends, bro. For they've real? been dating. Yeah. I think they've been dating since he was in the galaxy, and then uh, he 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 made a move. To yeah. FC Dallas yeah. somehow, yeah. some way. If she goes, she's going to be up in a suite somewhere, somewhere nice, nice little view somewhere, you know. Hey, so. Becky G, forget about that guy. Hit a Bali. Like hit a, a Bali. <laughs> hit me up. Whoa. Hit me up, Becky Whoa, <laughs> okay. On that note, we're going to shift gears. We're going to move on to the European segment of the Top Flight Podcast. Yeah. Let's get it going. B, take us into the first one. Yes, sir. I mean, the biggest game in Europe, the Clásico, Real Madrid Barcelona. <laughs> Same day as Austin FC playoffs. I mean, this weekend was jam-packed. We had Primo's wedding on Saturday. Oh, yeah. We had the playoff on Sunday with Clásico, with uh, Liverpool City, which we'll talk about a little bit after that. But let's get into the Clásico, bros. I mean, Real Madrid, 
three one win. In my opinion, statement win, bro. Could have been more. Benzema had a goal called back that was no. a little bit offsides, bro. Yeah. A bit, yeah. maybe a toe, but that's far. And we watched this at Hop Squad too. Yes. Where, uh, you know, pre gaming for the for the yes. playoff game. We were but, there. Uh, Shout out to Nev yeah. and uh, Peña, Madrid, Austin. They had coffee, cold brew. They had uh, beer started at, at ten. There was English muffin sandwiches. Yeah. There was pizza. Ooh, nice. It was a great vibe. And not only did we have the Clasico, we're gonna get into this game next. We, uh, we had a. Liverpool City also. It was a big game it was, day. Bro, it was just a, a big day, bro. I on mean. the Glasgow game, though, I want to say a couple stats on my guy, Karim. Hit us. 12 goals versus Barcelona for Karim. Incredible, bro. This is the 100th El Clasico at the Bernabeu. Only one win in seven for Barca in El Clasico. Another thing, Barca hasn't scored a free kick since Messi left. Right, I can keep going. No. Um, also, one thing, Karim Benzema, Ballon de Oro. B had mentioned this earlier. He's yes. the oldest player to what? He's the oldest player to win it since since like 66 years ago was like the next oldest. I mean, okay. it's been 66 years that someone's won it at his age or older. I mean, that's crazy. It was a really good yeah. game. Benzema definitely showed out for the home uh, uh, supporters. Vinicius Jr., you know, he did play well, but I really expected more from him. I think he had a really yeah. good matchup against Sergi Roberto, who is not on Vinny's level at all. Yeah. But Vinny had a quiet game, I guess. I mean, my take on it is like... Um, I think both teams played well, bro. I think Barca played well, but Real Madrid just played better, bro. I mean, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't just because Real Madrid just you know played well. Barcelona just played shitty and it was just off. No, I think they both played great, but Barcelona, but Real Madrid just played better, bro. I think they were, you know, they 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 had a little bit. Of, like I said, it was like a statement win. I think this is a statement win. I mean. You know Barcelona coming off that 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 draw with Inter. I mean, they're, it's not looking good for them. They're on like a, a small in the, in, the, in the mud. They're on like a small little decline. But uh, I think the game, as far as the performance, I think they played they played well when, when Torres scored that goal. And I was like, oh, I partido, yeah. I partido, and uh, it got tight. Sometimes it got was, it got tight. I was standing next to uh, Alvaro Dini right before this Barca goal, and I said, all right, it's a wrap, it's done. Then Barca scored. I'm like, God damn it! I should have shut up. <laughs> shout <laughs> out Dini, though. Shout out Dini. He was out there with us. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think Barcelona played well, bro. But at the end of the day, Madrid uh, with the penalty, which I don't think was a penalty, bro. It's controversial. I it's, do not think different. that was a yeah. penalty, bro. I do not think. Stepped on, bro. But either way, by that time, I think the game was was a wraps, and and I don't think it was a penalty. But Real Madrid take the three points. Go, they go three clear now. Yeah, Barca? three clear, top of the league. Three clear statement win for Real Madrid. I mean, they they're, they're flying. Fire, yeah, they're flying. Shout out Primo. He has the uh, Fede Valverde goal right now. We're watching it. What a strike! Hard and low. Yeah. Beautiful play. I want to ask you this, Bali. Tony Cruz went on Twitter. He made a tweet and he said, "Fede Valverde, top three in the world right now." Do you agree with Tony Cruz? No. Oh. I, I, I don't I don't agree I don't with Tony so, Cruz, bro. you know, but yeah. uh, but I will tell you something, Valverde, and I told you this last time yeah. when they, when uh, when Atleti played against Terrell, mm -hmm. Valverde was was a standout for me. He he's playing great, bro, and uh, the fact that he's from Uruguay, El like, Garra wow, you know nobody nobody yeah. went out for this guy, but yeah. Real Madrid got him, and uh, man, he, he's very very talented, bro, and you, man, you need to keep him. Apparently, his contract. apparently there was a rumor that Liverpool submitted a hundred million dollar bid right oh, yeah, before I did see the, that. the the window closed. Real Madrid was like, eh, eh. They, 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 they denied it. Yeah, they denied Ooh. it. 100%. They, they got uh, Nunez. Was that after or before? Uh, I think it Darwin. was after. I'm Darwin. pretty sure it was after. Yeah. Should be yeah. probably after. Yeah. Primo, I want to bring you in, bring you in on this, mate. Big Real Madrid fan, I know you are. What does this classical win mean to you, bro? It's actually incredible when we win, but to win in this fashion, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think. You know, it, it it was a big game. You know, it's always a big game when it's against Barcelona. But I think lately, bro, like we're we're kind of like we're kind of taking these, bro. Like yeah, these yeah. last classicals we've been playing against them, like they've Except all been last one. Like, the last one they smacked us. Yeah, yeah. out, primo, chill out, primo. The one before that was like another three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But nah, I mean these 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 games are always fun and and uh, big you know, biggest game in they're, Europe. They're uh, full of full of stars yeah. and. Just to be Barcelona, our biggest rival, it just means a lot. And we go three points clear. Yeah. Top of the league again. Um, where we should be. Yeah. Rightfully. Should be. Rightfully. So yeah, also, uh, what, what made it better, you know, as we move on from the El Clasico game, Karim Benzema, Ballon de Oro uh, ceremony was, um, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. No. Karim Benzema arriving in Tupac fashion. Tupac Ooh, fashion. Very interesting. Interesting. He, he, he pulled up with his baby mama and his girl. And his Jeez. girl. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. how hard that is, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. But hey, that's just incredible. Both of these wonderful ladies coming I, together yeah. for this <laughs> outstanding <laughs> yeah. man in an incredible moment, bro. Yeah. Body, I mean, 
Go ahead, Oh, I, 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 but leading up to me, I just wanted to say that this Ballon d'Or has been awarded to Benzema, and I think it has been the one where everyone unanimously was like, yeah. Yeah, Benzema. Yeah, it's, and yeah, it's, yeah, it's been clear, clear. it's been a while, bro. Yeah. When Messi wins it, nah, nah, nah. Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Yeah. Ronaldo wins it, nah, nah. Messi, Messi. Modric Even won, when Modric won, won, won it, it was won. like, what? Yeah. So this Ballon d'Or, I think it's been like oh, maybe a decade since I think everyone knew. And everyone was like, yeah, deserved. It's so strange, though, that Karim Benzema had, you know, not necessarily strange because he had an incredible season, you know, last year, Champions League run. We would not have won the Champions League without Karim Benzema. Yeah, I mean, look, I got his stats right here. I think in the in the... He scored. He scored three goals in the in the the second leg of round sixteen. Right, he had a hat trick. And then Is that a brace. Or he had uh, a hat trick in the second leg in the round of sixteen. A hat trick in the first leg of the quarterfinals. He had a, a goal in the second leg of the quarterfinals. Two in the first leg of the semi. One in the second leg of the semi. That I was mean, the PK. Yeah, and then the uh, oh. one. Is, I mean, come, I mean, come on, bro. I mean, He's this this fire. guy. Uh, I know v- Vini was a big part in y'all's uh, winning the, the, the Champions League, but without Benzema, I would not have won that trophy. And he deserves it, but on the door, bro. Deserved. Courtois, bro. Courtois came out. Also, and he Courtois, said, yeah, 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 yeah. Courtois Crying. came out. I was shocked with the way Courtois came out. And he said, I see now that it is impossible to win Ballon de Oro for a goalkeeper. He says this. He's like, you make the crucial save so your team can win Champions League and you're labeled as number seven or eight. To me, Courtois, bro, you we know you're the best keeper in the world, mate. You're not yeah. gonna win this award over Karim Benzema. I mean, it's nothing new, brother. I mean, remember Neuer? Only only one goalkeeper has won the uh, ba- uh, yes. really? Ballon d'Or. Yes, only yes, one yeah, goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. Ah, man. I, I, think I can it look was it up. Buffon. Buffon? I, uh, no, 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 no. It wasn't Buffon. It wasn't really? Buffon. It was it Buffon or Oliver Kahn? I think it was Oliver Kahn, but let me look. For real, a keeper's actually only, won the Ballon d'Or. Only one goalkeeper, goalkeeper yeah. has won uh, the. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, they don't win the Ballon d'Or. Nah, but I mean, remember Neuer? Neuer? Neuer was like second. Who won it? Uh, let me bring up the list, bro. Buffon? Why you uh, why you get that? I want to ask you about it. Benzema deserved, bro. Yeah. You know what? If there's a player in Real Madrid that I like, it's it's Benz. Hmm. I like Benzema. I like his style, his swag. You know everything about him, bro. And Vini, I like Vini too. But um, yeah, bro, well deserved, bro. You know, uh, I think it was uh, who was right behind him? Mbappe was behind him. No, Mbappe was like number like six. No, no, he yeah, Mbappe was like number six. Mbappe number was two. low. Yeah, and then Mbappe when he arrived, they were low. booing him too. Yeah. Sheesh. Beanie was also like number three, I think. I'm gonna say. I think so, should have been up there. I got it. So in 1963, Yashin received the Ballon d'Or, the only goalkeeper ever to receive the award. Oh, Yashin. 1963. Lev Yashin. 1963. Sixty three. Serious? Bro? Yeah, wow. nineteen sixty three. I thought it was a little bit. Lev so Yashin. Been, so it's been a couple decades, bro, since somebody's uh. Since the goalkeepers won. They called him the Black Spider. Yeah, it looks nice. Was a Russian. <laughs> That's the only guy that I'm seeing, bro. Yeah. I could have sworn yeah. somebody more modern had won it. Lev Yashin, 1963. Oh, no, you know what? I think a goalkeeper came second one time. Neuer came really second, close. bro. It Wasn't was really he? It was yes, Neuer? It was Neuer that came really close. Yeah, and yeah. Like, but eh, the yeah. point of Courtois, I mean, this is not this is not new, brother. I mean, it's it's tough. I mean... I don't know, bro. It's just there isn't a way that you could win a, Euro, uh, a European. I mean, the only reason why, the only way that this is the only way that I see this happen. I'll go real quick. Is that if like pretend Madrid zero zero, and Courtois has immaculate saves in each knockout phase, and they win by one goal, by one goal, by one goal, but they face like thirty shots each. I mean, that's the only way yeah. that I see a goalkeeper ever winning this this, this trophy, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Courtois had some really crazy. Saves. Bro, Courtois, yeah, he bro, he Courtois, really Courtois had the best performance. By a goalkeeper in the Champions League final history. Yes. I mean, that's I my opinion. Yeah, that I should agree. be written down somewhere. There I should agree. be a war for that. I agree. Um, I don't agree with Courtois' sentiment that he might have deserved the Ballon d'Oro. I think Benzema is a deserved winner. Yeah. Yes? Agree. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, move on to some honorable mentions real quick. Arsenal, top of the league. Four yeah. points clear yeah, of City. I think... I think the only team that can stop Real Madrid is Arsenal, bro. Oh, I'm being real. Word, you know, I think I think Arsenal <laughs> right, I think Madrid dude? right now are I think Madrid That's right now are guy. clear of La Liga. I don't think this anybody's guy. gonna stop uh Real Madrid, but if somebody is going to stop Madrid, I think it is going to be Arsenal. You know what, buddy? I'm gonna it give, has to be Arsenal. I'm gonna give Arsenal respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just made a face like, oh my god, but Arsenal's a good team. Yeah. Twenty seven points out of thirty, they're flying this season, bro. Yeah. Jesus has been an incredible addition to this Chaliba? team. Chaliba? I saw today that multiple clubs are after their director, Edu. Edu yes. Apparently, a, a lot of teams want him, but he's focused on the Arsenal project. Complete turnaround for this Arsenal club, mate. Anything you want to add on your team? Bro, we, we've been amazing, amazing. And uh, we, we find a way to win, bro. We have bad games, but we still find a way to win, bro. Yeah. 
And that that that's that's what a what a championship team is. A bit lucky versus Leeds though. No, no, no. no. Oh yeah, 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 no, no. I'll, I'll be real. Yeah, it, it was t- Leeds are great. In March, March, Jesse March got that t- Leeds team running twenty four seven the whole game. Jesse I mean, Marsh also said that Leeds deserved to win over Arsenal. They, press conference. Honestly, they did have a couple. They they were all over us. At Miss the end. PK Sam Bamford put it just yeah. wide. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's poor. Hey, but, but uh, look, man, it's it, all good. When you're at, when you're in that position, three points, three points, bro. Yeah, man, we keep yeah. it moving. All right, like, that was the Arsenal talk. I got to get my boy B in here for some Chelsea talk. I got a fan question for you, okay? Really. And the question is, did Kepa win the position over Mendy? Yes, that's well, 100%. Kepa, hey, Kepa, what yes. happened with Keith? He kind of woke up. Bro, right? like, uh, he, Potter gave him a, a shot, bro. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he took his opportunity well. I mean, Mendy had a, a, a bad start to the season, you know, uh, mistakes over, on, the, on the two goal. And then uh, Potter comes in, gives Kepa a chance. And this game against Aston Villa, I mean, he had an amazing performance. And uh, I was listening to a podcast and they said that on the Who Scored website, whoscored.com, they have like XG and stats and stuff like that. So far this season, Kepa has had the best stats or performances of all season and of all goalkeepers, bro, right oh, now. Nice. I think, also, another quick step yeah. that we were talking about earlier, Chelsea has kept four clean sheets for the first time since what year? Nine, uh, 2016. <laughs> <Since 19. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> 2016. 2016, 2016, brother. 20, that was uh, Antonio Conte's uh, Chelsea. Six years, mate. Yeah, bro. It's... I mean, look, I, I, I told you, bro, when Tuko got sacked, I was like, who we got? And I wanted Potter. I mean, yeah. in the morning, Her- you brought Her- the Her- You were the Her- only one. I was, was uh, bro, I, was everybody was grieving this. Tuko. And look, I, res- I, I understand. I was laughing You, you were Potter. laughing. He was laughing. Um, everybody was grieving. But I was already on Potter. I was like, we got to get Potter, man. We got to mm-hmm. get Potter, bro. And, and he, we're not seeing Potter ball, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. We're not really seeing a big shift in the way Potter wants to play. He's still kind of riding on Tuko's ideology a little bit slowly turn tweaking it a little by little because you can't just cold turkey yes you know mm-hmm. what i mean so so i mean it's it's going great and uh, to arsenal being first uh city uh dropping points liverpool we'll get to that game here in a little bit but i, I think this premier league season is like it's just wide open right now and, and we're right there bro let's get into that city liverpool yeah. game with the last game we'll talk about on the pod City losing to Liverpool one nil. Holland completely neutralized by yeah. Gomez and Virgil Van Dijk. <laughs> Interesting stat: Virgil Van Dijk has never lost a game at Anfield. I could not believe it when I heard that, bro. Wow. Virgil Van Dijk undefeated at Anfield. Yeah. You'd think that maybe he lost a game or two, but wow, this guy when he wants to, he's class, bro. Uh, thoughts on this game, B City? Yeah, Liverpool. bro. I mean, look, man. Um, when when when, when we're also again we were at fucking hop. I mean, gosh, what a what a day, what a Sunday of football. I mean, uh, we saw uh, uh, Imani there was watching the game. She we had, had a classico there. She had the they had uh, uh, chance going. The chance going. Liverpool I chance, mean, yeah. it, you know, when I saw the the time on the game, I was like. Honestly, I'm gonna just say like Holland hasn't scored yet. Like that's just the type yeah, of vibe that yeah. that I, that I would take on this, this game with with Manchester City. And um, you know, there was a lot of a lot of calls, a little a little iffy calls, a missed penalty. I mean, just Salah was getting Salah bitchy. getting mm-hmm. getting chopped. You know what I mean? So um, at the end, I think Salah he he's getting a little spark back in, in his game, and this is a big win for Liverpool. I mean, at Anfield too. I mean. You know, Klopp getting sent off. It was just, it was just, this is like if if the Premier League wants to show the quality of how good this league is, they need to showcase this game because this mm. game was was just amazing. This, this Liverpool City games are always great, bro. They're always, always good. great. Even if it's 0-0. Zero, zero, Even if it's 0-0, zero, zero, one yeah. they're freaking great. Yeah. And then, uh, like you said, Haaland kept off the score sheet, bro. For the first time in a while, bro. Yeah. That was a really good header. Yeah. Bali, I want to bring you in on this. My question for you is, no Trent in the starting eleven forward Liverpool and they win he did come on late in the 90th minute they put him as like a right winger like mm-hmm. not defensive at all is this the beginning of the end for Trent Alexander in Liverpool oh yeah man uh what do you expect bro I mean Martinelli destroyed him yeah, he did Martinelli man. ended four, him. Four <laughs> in the first minute yeah yeah in the Ma- first Martinelli minute. destroyed him bro he 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 ended he ended him bro he, he's, yeah. he's done he's done done was it Martinelli or was it Napoli nah Ma- Martinelli Martinelli it was, okay. it was Martinelli okay Bay, same question. Is this the end for Trent Alexander Arnold with Jurgen Klopp's defense? Man, I don't know. I think uh I don't think so, bro. I think Klopp isn't the type of player that just kinda kill you off or like sentence you to like bench just because of, you know. I don't think so, bro. I think he I mean, I think he's a big part. I mean, this is the way Liverpool play. I mean, when Liverpool are playing well, Trent is playing well. When Liverpool are playing shit, it's just you get exposed and, and that's the weakness of people. Trent is getting uh, exposed on his defensive side of the game, man. Yes. He's a great player going forward. And Liverpool, forward. they defend by having the ball. Yeah. They they defend by going forward. So I I I don't think so, bro. I think he still is a big part of this team. 
I but think his def- the defense sucks. But what about if you just sw- maybe put him in the midfield? That's what bro. everybody says, bro. Put him so in the midfield says. and then go yeah. get your right back that can yeah. defend. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he is quality, bro. They could buy Cancelo. Nah, <laughs> they could buy Cancelo. <laughs> I don't uh, think so. Primo, I want to bring you in, bring you in on this, mate. Cancelo, the guy that I just mentioned, he is a rumored Real Madrid target for next season, He's trying to replace uh, an aging uh, Dani Carvajal. Sheesh. He's had some heart <laughs> issues in the past too, but he's been he's been great for us. But we're looking to replace him soon. Cancelo is that man that might be the one to take that job. But he had a mistake that led to Liverpool's winning goal. Uh, did you get a chance to uh, see that goal? Uh, I saw the goal. I saw the highlights. I didn't see the game, but I did catch the highlights. Thoughts um, on that mistake by Joao Cancelo? I mean, I think John. I think he's great overall, bro. I think you know mistakes happen, and and you know in the back line. But you know if he's coming up as a rumor, I wouldn't be mad about it. You know he's a great player overall. Um, he's been somewhat consistent with Mad City for a while, um, and. We're going to need a right back soon, bro. You know, Carvajal yeah. is aging. We don't really have a backup for him. Our backup is Lucas Vasquez, who <laughs> was a midfielder and then transitioned to a right back. Shout out to him. He's like our John Gallagher. Yeah. yeah he's really? like our John Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas but, uh, he just wants to play. Yeah. His, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's how he gets his playing time. He just transitioned into um, a right back. But. Yeah, sooner or later we're gonna need someone new, and yes. if it's if it's him, I wouldn't be mad about I it. I mean, we 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 were looking at Reese James, but he got a injury, so hey, those rumors quiet been, down a bit. That would have been a good pickup. You that better, was you better never, drop a hundred million. I oh, never we, had oh, any heat, oh, oh, bro. We got four hundred twenty-five million in the bank ready yeah. to go. <laughs> yeah. That number just dropped. Real Madrid supposedly they have four hundred twenty-five in funds ready for yeah. transfers. Damn, four twenty-five on the game. I, I I said penalty, but I meant the the VAR decision on the on the city goal, but. Yeah, I mean, Trent getting that injury will miss the World Cup. Uh, Angolo Kante will miss the World Cup as well. Just yeah, big a hit Jota after hit. Today was Jota announced. today is out of the World Cup as well. I mean, people, man. a lot of it people sucks, are falling, man. and this is typical. I mean, we Injuries. knew. We knew, but if you yeah. put the World Cup in the middle of the season, I mean, come on, bro. You know, during the summer, you have the end of the season, and you can recover and be rested, but it's a, it's a different vibe, this one. One person that will be rested is Erling Haaland, so y'all better watch out for oh, that yeah. monster. Yeah. That yeah. dude... He, standing next to Virgil van Dijk, I had no idea they were the same size, bro. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Erling Holland is huge. Yeah. He is. Um, anything else you want to add on the European segment, boys? No, man. A lot of games coming in fast. I mean, as we're recording this, uh, some EPL games happen tomorrow. When you hear this, uh, there will be some more games. You got Tottenham playing, United playing. I mean, these games are coming in fast, and we're, we're trying to we're trying to cover them, and we're trying to jump in the stew and, and give you all the show. And um, yeah, We got the um, World Cup coverage. We got the World Cup. World Cup. Yeah. Man, we actually busy, just bro. talked about yeah, it today. Yeah. Y'all better be ready. Yeah, yeah. Also, shout out to the soccer cooligans for uh, sharing. Yeah, yeah today was dope, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the cooligans. Shout out to uh, Guadalupe Cordova uh, uh, real estate team with Roman Lopez Group. If you have any questions in the Austin area about anything that has to do with selling a house or buying a home, make sure to hit her up. Shout out to her, sponsor for Wilson TV and Top Flight. Uh, on that note, episode 67, we'll go ahead and yes end sir, it right here. Yes, sir. Thank you for your support, and we'll be back soon. Peace.